Hey guys, welcome to Garden Radio. Tonight we have Phil Summers. And Phil Summers, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, definitely. Uh, hello everybody, Phil Summers. I, uh, I, I run the uh, show Paranormal Philosophies on ParanormalTVNetwork.com. Awesome. Um, can you tell me more about how you got started in the paranormal? Well, that's a, that's a long story, and you know, my uh, grandpa up in Tennessee, I used to visit them all the time, and uh, one thing we would always do is we would watch History Channel, Sci-Fi Channel, it wasn't S-Y, F-Y back then, it was actually S-C-I, F-I back then, but uh, we used to watch Sci-Fi Channel all the time, and just... Uh, you know, watch the, watch the shows, and I, I kind of got interested in it from the shows, like it, like like a lot of people did. And uh, basically, after watching the shows for a couple of years, I, I finally decided to go out and do one of my own, do an investigation of my own. And, and by the time I was about 12, 13 years old, I went out with, the, you ever seen the movie Home Alone? Yeah, I did. Remember that tape recorder that Waltman that he used in Home Alone? I used that same exact recorder to go out, and that's all I had. I didn't have any other any other piece of equipment, and all, that's all I had. And I, I went out, and I captured one of the creepiest sounds that I've ever heard in my life to this day that still I haven't ever heard an EVP like this. After my years of research, I still have never heard anything like that. And and I, after that, I was hooked. I was hooked on the uh, the EVP research field. You know, researching sounds that humans, most humans, can hear. And uh, just just all around interested in sounds, and that's how I got in. Alrighty, and would you like me to play that EVP that you showed me earlier tonight? Yeah, sure, yeah, you, you got it, you got it for you. Yeah, definitely. Alrighty, um, also, as far as the paranormal goes, what is your group called again? Do you have one, or are you independent? Well, well no, I, I am a uh, private researcher. I don't affiliate myself with the group, but I okay. do investigate with other groups. If a group calls me in, I will go out and investigate with another group. It doesn't matter. Okay. How well known or who who they are. If they need my help, I'll go help them out. All right. And for everyone in the audience, I'm going to be showing them your website. Um, this is his website. It's philsummersofficial.com. And it's really well done. Um, there's a video on here that you showed me last night as well. And I loved it. It was cool. It was with the K2, right? Oh, yeah. That, that video was footage from an investigation I just did Tuesday night. It was at a uh, it was at the oldest Presbyterian church in America, and uh, we basically basically went out there, did our thing, and mm -hmm. one of the things that we did was use the K two meter with the ghost box. I'm telling you, we had some interesting interactions between the K two meter as well as the ghost box, and that that doesn't happen too often. We get interactions between two pieces of paranormal technology. At the same time. And yeah. As a matter of fact, and, and we captured it on film, and we got, we, we did three separate experiments, and they all worked out for us, and it just worked. Alrighty. Well, I'm going to, if you don't mind, I'm going to show the first video, and then after that, I'm going to do right. the EVP, the one that you said started your... Yeah, definitely, sure. And how old were you sure. at the time when you caught the EVP? I was going on 13 years old when I when I captured that EVP. Okay. Where where exactly were you to catch it? Uh, so, what's that? Where did you catch it exactly? Actually, it's this uh, Jewish cemetery down in uh, Charleston, South Carolina. It's this. It, I honestly don't remember the name of it because I because I never really been back there because I was so I was so frightened that I never went back. Oh wow. Day. And what location is this in? What town? What state? Uh, it's, in, uh, it's in Charleston, South Carolina. Okay, all right. I, I can take anybody to it, but I 
can't really tell the name of it because it, all it really says on the cemetery gates is Jewish cemetery, pretty much. Interesting. Yeah, I've never had a bad encounter in a Jewish cemetery, and I've been to a few, so that's strange. All right. Well, let me um, let me play the video, and you can stay on the phone. And then after that, if there's anything else that you'd want to add to it, on top of that, hopefully we'll have some questions from the audience. They're making a ticket from yeah, there. Definitely. Okay. We're gonna do the screen and the first video, guys. This is the video of the footage he caught with the K2, and it was intelligent. So let me get that started. Is there anybody here? I'd love to come to the ghost box. What? Whoa. Y'all heard that, right? She said, it's a, it's a female voice that said me. With the spirit who said me, would you like to give us your name, please? If you see this green light that is here, would you be able to come closer to it? Would you be able to light it up in red? Yes, you would be able to light it up red. I heard you say yes. Oh, oops. Here we go. I want to count to three. When I hit three, would you be able to make it light up? All right. One. Two. Three. Oh, holy. You saw that. I saw it. What I'm thinking, guys, is that with us being able to use this ghost box, we're able to communicate with the spirits along with using another piece of paranormal technology that is said to uh, notify us if there's any type of electromagnetic change around. We are going to do a K2 meter session without the ghost box because they are intelligent enough here to be able to make it light up. Now, if there are any spirits that are still here that want to communicate with us, would you be able to make this thing light up the red every time I ask you yes or no question? I'm going to have you light it up yes once no, twice. Alright. It's the spirit that is here with us right now. What the? <laughs> I saw that. It did it. I didn't even ask the question, guys, and it lit up once. So, yes, there is a spirit here. The spirit that is here, are you female? Give it a few. The spirit that is here, are you female? Yes. I caught that. Are you saying, through the ghost box, are you the one that is saying feet? Yes. Alright. What is it about feet that you don't like? Is it that we are standing on your tomb? Do you not like the fact that we are standing on your tomb? You saw that. Now see, this is what I like about the paranormal. We have things that are being confirmed by yes or no questions. Because I said, light up once for yes, twice for no.
Alright you guys, and that's the first video. And then um, also the next one is going to be an EVP and that one's going to be very loud. So I don't know, can the audience hear it too loud or is it too soft? Yeah, you might want to cover your ears a little bit on this one. Yeah, this one I think I'm going to turn it down a bit because it's going to echo pretty loud over here. Okay, yeah, Cheryl says it's too loud. Okay, well I'll be turning it down. This EVP is going to be really loud anyway, and I might end up turning down the YouTube one as well. So this EVP is pretty insane. I must say myself. So let's get it started. And this is the one that started Phil into the paranormal. It's low for now, so... I know the second one that you showed me, that one kind of struck an interest for me too last night. That was interesting. So, um. Well, the thing that interests me about that, that particular EVP is, you know, yeah, I captured it at a Jewish cemetery, you know. It's, it's like I captured it at a place you wouldn't think there would be any type of evil entity, though, or anything that would sound anything like that, you know. It's. Yeah, well, it's like you, you don't think, but that's the thing. The paranormal, that's that's what the paranormal is all about. You know, you, you, it's everything out of the norm, and that's definitely out of the norm. When, two, when anybody with high energies interacts with any type of piece of technology, it will, it will definitely, there will definitely be some things that are odd that happens. I mean, it happens with me all the time. Yeah. This is just too weird. Shoot. So, a computer crash? Yeah, it's back up again, but the internet's giving me a problem, so hold on one sec. The internet should be back. Alright, um... I believe we're back. I don't know why this is... Okay, guys, we're back. As usual, anything paranormal seems to crash the computer. <laughs> Every single time. So, um... This is Phil again. I don't know. Can you guys see me? What's up, guys? I'm here. Okay. Yeah, um, it still says it's been going on for about 15 minutes, so that should have saved everything, because nothing's been deleted, so that's good. 
Um, yeah, so, I mean, I find the evidence to be really interesting, especially the EVP. Um, has anyone ever tried to look into that EVP and research the place to see if there's any reason? Oh, I've never really, i never really started, i never really put out that EVP until past few years. I've had it out maybe three or four years because I've always been I've always been worried what people would think of it. You know, what people would think of somebody breaking into a cemetery and, and going on a paranormal investigation. But you know what? That's the thing. When I was young, I was 13 years old, I was interested. Things happen. You know, you, you learn, you grow older, you learn from mistakes. And that's one of those things that I definitely learned from. And, and it's, that's one thing you gotta do as a paranormal investigator. Just learn, learn as you go. And that's what I did. Learn, learn as I went. And uh, as far as anybody researching that EVP or anything else, nobody's ever done any research. I tried to do research, and and there's just nothing that would come up of it. Why that EVP happened? Yeah. All right. I mean, well. if, if you. If you look at the property, this was taken right in the middle of the center of the cemetery. There is no AC units that could make that noise that loud. There are no cars passing by. This was really late at night. There were there was not any wind of that night. And also, I mean it's it was all around a clear night, just what a typical Charleston summer night. I also wanted to ask you, Cheryl in the audience was trying to ask, what do you know about the tomb that, that you were at at the time? Were you near any about, certain... About, about the what? The tomb? Were you near any tombs at the time? Uh, the one that you took the picture, not the pictures, the K2. Oh, about the, about the tomb. That, that, was a, uh, that was a crypt. That was in the back of the... Presbyterian Church that everybody goes to. That place is like a uh, high school hangout. You know, people go over there all the time to disrespect that place. And people go over there all the time to get drunk, all that stuff. And that's one of the things that we were trying to portray as we were airing that episode. You know, we, we, we made sure that people knew that we had permission from the, from the, from the minister of that church to go in there. If only we had police with us. We didn't have police with us. Their walkie-talkies were on then. But there are two police officers that were really too afraid to go into the cemetery or the graveyard. And uh, they're, they're really too afraid. And there's only one that was with us. But he had a earpiece on, so there's no way that you could have heard his walkie-talkie. Mm -hmm. And during that session, you could see points in time when the when the K2 meters spike up with the with the walkie-talkies going, they were about 70 feet away. There, was, there should have been no reason why we we, we, we pretty much made, made it a fact to make sure that the walkie-talkies wouldn't affect it that much on the episode. And, uh, and sure enough, it, did, it shouldn't have affected it that much. And, and you know, we... We made sure of all the elements that were around us. We, we made positive that they wouldn't affect our equipment. And uh, we, that crypt, when you, uh, it's, it's strange. It's a strange feeling when you're in that crypt. Because I've heard, I've heard a disembodied voice inside that crypt before. Uh, mm -hmm. First time I was there, I was with, with one of the officers that was with us that night. And, it was definitely interacting with us. We were hearing, we were hearing something. But I couldn't understand what it was saying, and uh, that's what. I, and that's just one thing. One thing about that session, you get. They didn't want us to be in there. That's why, during the episode, you saw that we transitioned to another spot on the location that we were at. We didn't stay there long at all, 
And that's one thing that we want to make sure that people know is respect respect the dead, pretty much. Okay. And then we also have one other question about the tomb. Uh, yeah. What was the woman's first name? I'm not going to ask for the whole name, the obviously. The first name was Victoria. Her middle name was Anne. Okay. And we heard, we thought we heard Anna, but but the but the EVPs that were coming through were my name. We thought we were hearing Anna, but they were definitely my name. They were definitely distinct Philip, 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 the whole way during the uh, ghost box session. That's one thing you will encounter in a certain spot like that when you're trying to when you're trying to get the attention of one spirit, there will be so many others trying to get through. Okay. And then, um, is there anything else that you wanted to mention to the audience besides the site? I think I might be able to play the Paranormal Philosophy Paranormal. sneak peek in a little bit. But, um, do you have any events coming up? Any seminars? Any kind of... Oh, we got thing? some coming in the, uh, we got some in the making. Um, be on, just be on the lookout for uh, news and information on my Facebook page. Find me on Facebook. I'm pretty sure I know. I'm pretty sure I know what Cheryl you're talking about. Hi, Cheryl. Just want to throw that out there. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, just uh, check out the news and information. Um. Facebook.com slash Phil Summers Paranormal Investigator. Easy enough. Uh, you can check out my website at www.philsummersofficial.com. That's uh, two N's, just like this season, and official.com. Okay. And I'll... just keep on the lookout on, you know, just keep a lookout on videos. I mean, if you're offended by language, I want to watch the videos because that's one thing I do is when, when I put out my videos, I don't edit a lot of this stuff because I want to have a raw, unedited feel when it comes to my paranormal investigation evidence. So, if you're offended by language, I would not watch my, watch my videos. <laughs> I've had people complain to me about that, actually. But you know what? Whatever. You know, that's people complain. They don't yeah, have to watch um, them. They don't know what to, you know? They complain if you're uh, too appropriate in certain ways, and so they complain no yeah, matter what. Good. So it's just part of life; it doesn't matter as long as yeah, you put a rating on life, it. Man. Can't always satisfy everybody. Exactly. Okay. Well, um, I really thank you for coming on the show, and um, if you'd like, I can play the sneak peek video if you'd want. The 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 what video? The Paranormal Philosophy sneak peek. It's on your site, that one. Oh, the, the opening credits? Yeah, I believe so, actually. Let me see. Yeah, it's about a two-minute video. Would you like that? Sure. Uh, sure. Where? Alrighty. Um, this is going to be the last of the video. Um, once we do the video, I'm going to go to commercial, and then we're going to bring up Cass Sumwalt. We might have Chad back on, but I believe he lost the internet, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Um, Phil, do you want to come back and do a round table, or do you, are you good for the night? I'm going to be pretty busy the rest of the night. <laughs> Alrighty, well. I didn't think, I, I didn't think I'd be this busy, that's why, that's why I thought I'd be, I thought I'd be around a computer, but, you know, that's, that's the way life is. I, 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 I rolled through life by the seat of my pants, so I don't ever have plans that. Alrighty. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show, and you're always welcome back. And I'm sure you know that. Definitely. So. Definitely. I'll, I'll come back whenever. Alrighty. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Right. Okay, bye. Okay, guys. That was Phil Summers. And the last part of his show, I'm going to play Paranormal Philosophies. It's the sneak peek. And it's on uh, PTN, which is the Paranormal Television Network. Um, let me get that going. And then I'll go for a short break. And when we're back, I'll be calling in Cass Sumwalt. And then from there, we'll see if Chad can join us. And if not, then we'll have an interview just with her. And then we'll be able to play the Frontier Paracon commercial and also uh, the team video and a few other things as well. So 
I'll let you play the I'll let you see the video and then I'll go to the break. Something were to possibly say manifest, you would see this thing light up like crazy. All right, now the base ratings of this uh, jail is uh, there's really not a lot of electromagnetic energy coming out of this uh, this environment. Just in a couple places, there's offices, there's a place where there's computers all around the room, but I don't think there's any type of electromagnetic instructions that are coming. Just then, so. Ryan and I capture a creepy voice. Sounds like a child. Listen for yourself. There's some kids outside. Want to see if we can see them? I want to see if I can see them. Here we capture the same voice, but it sounds like it's singing to us. Listen for yourself, and you be the judge. Are they inside? Oh, wow. It's almost like they're inside. It sure did. We walk over to the window to check and see if there was Can anybody around, but there was nobody present. There's nobody out there. Holy crap. There's nobody out there. Dude. That was the clearest thing I've ever That was the clearest? Here's that same sound we heard, but with enhanced audio. That was there coming up. From any other place, so. Outside, There's some kids outside. I want to see if we can steer. I want to see if I can see them. As you could hear within the sound of the echo, you could tell that they were inside the jail. Oh, wow. Alrighty. Okay, guys, now I'm going to take a break. I'll see you all back in just a minute, about five minutes, to interview Cass and Walt. See you guys soon.